Good morning, East Point Church. How are you guys? Good. I said, how are you guys? All right, you're away. Good to be with you this morning. Go ahead and open up your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, we got a special, special gathering plan, a good week ahead of us. But first, hey, the Bible says to give honor to whom honor is due. And I'm just so pleased that for the first time, my mom and dad are sitting in the gathering together. Can we just give my mom and dad a welcome? Thank you, guys. Man, yeah. It is, uh, you know, everybody's looking. Where are they? They're up in the balcony, up top, the VIP seats. Gave them the good spots. But uh, no, you guys, you guys have heard my story, you know, how I'm adopted and all that a uh, little bit here and there through my preaching. You know how much I love my mom and dad. And so I, it's no exaggeration to say that what you're experiencing here through me and my family is like because of what's sitting right there. So uh, if you get a chance to say hello, give them a high five on the way out, uh, I'm sure they would love that. If you could uh, convince them to move to Maryland, extra, extra bonus points for you. So um, anyway, go ahead and open up your Bibles, Proverbs chapter 3. I want you to imagine for a moment that the gathering finishes. Get in your car, you drive home, you kick off your shoes, you take off your church clothes, you put on your sweats, that Sunday pair of sweats. You turn on the television, and there's a commercial. And in this commercial, there's a man wearing fitted blue jeans. He's got a beautiful smile. He's got a golden retriever, a perfect golden retriever. He's running through a grassy field as they play fetch. And then they end the commercial sitting on the back of his pickup truck. That could be your life if you buy those pair of jeans. That's what the commercial says, isn't it? You change the channel, you turn it over, and you see a wealthy couple cruising down the Autobahn. That's in Germany. They speak six different languages. They have perfect jawlines, perfect teeth. They're wearing designer clothes. They have sunglasses that are more expensive than your home. And they're cruising. That could be your life if you drive a V-dub. It's true. That's what the commercial says. If you buy a Volkswagen, maybe that's what your life could look like. You change the channel and you see some perfectly fit 20-something-year-olds, tons of friends at a massive pool party, at a mansion. You realize that you could have friends like that. You could be invited to parties like that. You could roll deep like that if only you drank the same beverage that they drank. Man, it's that simple change the channel, right? And you see a dude with perfectly chiseled muscles and a six-pack, and he's picking up weights in the gym in slow motion. Cha-cha-cha-cha-cha. And he's swimming in an Olympic-sized pool, and then he checks his watch to see his heart rate, and then he's out on a track moments later, sprinting 100-meter dashes. That could be your life, too, if you just buy an Apple Watch. I fell for that one. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you know, that one got me. I was like, I want that life. But do you get it, friends? This is what advertising is. Advertising, commercials, is nothing less than promising you that this will change your life. This will change your life. If you buy this product, you will be experiencing a way of life. This picture of reality could be yours for easy payments if you only had this product. Right? And so advertising is, I mean, really, we should just call it for what it is. It is false advertising. Buying that car won't give you that life. Wearing those clothes won't change your life. Drinking that drink won't give you all those friends. It's false advertising. But you can't really blame them, can you? Like, how much product would they sell if they told you the truth? <laughs> Good morning out there. Uh, just want to let you know that I'm selling watches. To be honest, you can take it or leave it. Not really a big deal. It won't change your life, but we're hoping to turn a profit. So please buy our product. Nobody's going to buy that because it doesn't promise you anything, friends. Very few things can change your life. Very few things live up to the hype. Very few things that if you acquired them would radically change what your life looks like. Very few things do that. But today we get to hear about one of them. Can I share it with you? There's actually one thing. There is one thing, and it's not false advertising. There is one thing that if you were to get this, if you were to acquire it, if you got hold of it and never let it go, friends, there is one thing that would change your life, and it's called wisdom. 
Walking in wisdom will change your life. And friends, as I prepared this passage this week, I realized that our text, these, these verses basically amount to a commercial. What we're going to see in our passage this morning, that this is an ad for wisdom. And if this was a commercial, if we could see this right now, this commercial would offer us three things. The immeasurable value of wisdom, the confident peace of wisdom, and the beautiful culture that comes with wisdom. The invaluable wealth and value of wisdom, the confident peace of wisdom, and the beautiful culture of wisdom. That could be your life if you get wisdom. Can I share with you the commercial this morning? Anybody interested in just for a few moments? Can I share this ad with you? I promise you it's not false advertising. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Proverbs chapter 3. We're going to kick it off in verse 13. This is God's word for East Point Church. Look what it says. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding. For the gain from her is better than gain from silver and her profit better than gold. She's more precious than jewels and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold her fast are called blessed. Let's pause right there. First thing we see in this ad for wisdom, the lives of the wise are long and blessed. The lives of the wise are long and blessed. The first and last word of this little paragraph that we just read is blessed. This is a pronouncement. This is to be living life the right way. This is to be successful in God's eyes. We say this word blessed when we look at somebody and their lifestyle and we say, man, it is good to be you for clearly you have God's favor. It's going well for you. Every time I see the word blessed, I highlight it because this word is like a spotlight. The Bible uses this word to shine a light on a specific path as if to say, this is the lifestyle of which God approves. This is the path that is good. This is the way that works well. Friends, pay attention. This is the lifestyle that will result in God's nearness and in his rewards. This is the way that works. So you see, it's funny because the world, they've taken this word. The world has taken this spotlight and they have their pronouncements. The world is shining a light on the path that they think is blessed. And so the world says, blessed are you if you make buku bucks and tons of money. No, 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 you know which way is blessed? You know what the right way of living is? And they shine a spotlight over here. Those who climb the corporate ladder, that's true success. No, 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 it's this. He who has the most toys wins. You're blessed. No, 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 it's who has the most, the most followers on Instagram. Who has the biggest influence? No, no, who looks the youngest, even though you're not young, right? Who has a fit body? Who has a perfect smile? blessed. The world is pronouncing who they think is blessed. But here in the Bible, we have a pronouncement from God. He takes the spotlight and he goes, let me tell you who is truly blessed. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom. Truly blessed is the person who pursues wisdom and lays hold of it and holds her fast and never lets it go. The person who gets wisdom is blessed above all else. And do you know why? Do you know why gaining wisdom is such a blessing? Listen to me, friends. Because wisdom is more valuable than any of you in this room truly understand. Wisdom is more valuable than you can imagine. To convince, of the, to convince us of this, he, he uses categories that our mind naturally goes to when we think about value. He, he compares it to money. He goes, I want you in one hand, I want you to take a bunch of precious jewels and then put wisdom in the other hand. What weighs more? Wisdom does. Wisdom is more valuable. It's more valuable than your jewels. Friends, the ROI, the return on investment of wisdom is way more than anything you gained in the stock market this year. 
Friends, the profit that will come into your life as a result of holding wisdom is so much more than anything that your passive income investments realized. This is extremely valuable. You see, if you were to walk into to, to the house, wisdom's house, you would realize that wisdom is not a trinket that you put on the shelf from grandma that has no value, but it's sentimental. Wisdom is not the trinket on your shelf. Wisdom is the asset that you have locked away in your fireproof safe because it is the most valuable thing that you own in your home. Wisdom is extremely valuable. If I were to ask you right now, what's the most desirous material thing that you would want right now? What would it be? Money's no object. Come on, little mental exercise. If money was no object, what is one thing that you would go, man, that would be so valuable? A mansion on the water. A Tesla. I don't know what it is, right? A new boat. A bigger boat. Right? Whatever it is. I want, you, I want you to see what your imagination is. What would be the most valuable material possession you can have? And the author of Proverbs looks at you and he laughs because nothing you could desire can compare with her. He says, you're not dreaming big enough. There is a significantly more valuable pursuit than money, and it's not even close. Listen to what Pastor Ray Ortland says. He says, money can put food on the table, but wisdom puts laughter around that table. Money can buy a house, but wisdom makes it a home. Money can buy a woman jewelry, but wisdom wins her heart. All the ladies just nodded. I like that. They're like, mm-hmm. Tell them, Pastor. I did, all right? You see what they're saying here? Money fills your bank account, but wisdom enriches your life. Wisdom is so valuable. Look how valuable it is. Wisdom, every time she rolls into a party, she comes with party gifts. Do you guys see it? Every time she strolls into your house, she comes with gifts. Look what's in her right hand. In her right hand, we find long life. Those who roll with wisdom are blessed with an invaluable quality of life. How many lives have been cut short by violence, stress, anxiety, worry? But those who roll with wisdom, they're rolling in ways of pleasantness. <sighs> they're being led on paths of peace. Can you put a price tag on that? I'll take that any day over jewels. You see, in wisdom's wake, as she walks through the room, we see in her wake a lack of contentiousness, a lack of petty conflict, a lack of turbulence and turmoil and all the little things that steal the quality of her lives. Those who follow wisdom, their lives are enriched with life-giving peace and pleasantness. Friends, when you walk with wisdom, it's as if you have eaten of the tree of life because wisdom is a source of the abundant life. How much potential peace in our lives has been missed because wisdom wasn't invited to the party? How much pleasantness in our families has been lost to pettiness, tension, and discord because wisdom wasn't given a seat at the table? When you roll with wisdom, it enriches your life. Not only is there long life in her right hand, but she's got two hands. Look what's in her left hand. Riches and honor. Do you see the irony here? How many people have ignored wisdom because they wanted to pursue money instead? And yet, if they would have hung around, yet if they would have rolled with wisdom, they'd realize, actually, when wisdom shows up, you have what you need. When you roll with wisdom, you will make the money that you need to make. That is good for you. She blesses those who keep her. Friends, the lives of the wise are long and blessed. Blessed are you, East Point Church, who get and find wisdom because the quality of your life will be enriched abundantly. That could be your life. <laughs> That's the commercial. If you get wisdom, that could be your life if you pursue and lay hold of wisdom. Friends, I'm gonna tell you again, nothing you desire can compare with wisdom. Do you believe that this morning? No, come on, don't do that, right? You give me the congregational polite nod. Mm-hmm, pastor, mm-hmm. 
I'll write that down. No, do you honestly believe it in your heart? Do you honestly believe that nothing you desire on earth can compare with wisdom? If you had to choose this morning, what would you choose? Church, I'm telling you, don't settle for chasing money when there's something infinitely greater to run after. And so the commercial continues. Not only do we see the immeasurable value of wisdom, we're also told of the confident peace that comes with wisdom. Look at the next verse. The Lord, by wisdom, founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the deeps broke open and the clouds dropped down the dew. My son, do not lose sight of these. Keep sound wisdom and discretion, and they will be life for your soul and adornment for your neck. Then you will walk on your way securely, and your foot will not stumble. If you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden terror or of the ruin of the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Friends, the second thing we see in our commercial, the paths of the wise are paved with peace. The paths of the wise are paved with peace. Any 90s kids? Remember Fifle Goes West? There are no rats in America. Anybody? All right, all three of us. We remember, right? What did they say in Fifle? It's, I want to go to the land where the streets are paved with cheese, right? That's what wisdom is saying, but it's not cheese, friends. It's peace. We're in the middle of this commercial, and we get this, almost, it seems random at first, but look what it says. He, he, sees, he sees it fit in the middle of our commercial to remind us that the Lord by wisdom founded the earth. He's reminding us here, right in the middle, that the universe didn't just happen. Spoiler alert, life did not emerge from some primordial goo by some lucky accident of the universe. No, no, no. He says it here that in the beginning, the Lord put on his hard hat and he got to work. That he founded the earth, that he intentionally designed and actively built the system of this world. And as he was designing it, he employed wisdom in the beginning. As he put the world together, as he fashioned the universe, it says that his tools were understanding and knowledge. As he determined how far to put the earth from the sun, there was in logic to it. As he determined how to make the, the little tiny neural pathways in your brain, there was logic to it. This is a complex system of order and logic and wisdom. God wasn't improvising. This universe, there is a wise design here. I'll say it this way. There is a grain, right? There is a way that it's supposed to work. There is a deeply embedded logic in the very DNA of our universe. Why is this important? Because here's his point. Disregard God's wise design at your own risk. Disregard God's wise design at your own risk. Let me give you a metaphor here. How many people in this room would say that they enjoy a good steak? You're like, well, that didn't go where I thought he was going. Come on, don't be shy. Hi, all right. We're coming to your house after church. And so I'm going to break every rule that you learn in preacher school. I'm going to put up a picture of food. Oof. <laughs> yeah, right? You're awake now. Good morning. And so I don't know if you know this, but when you prepare a steak, when you cook it and sear it, however you prepare your steak, when you finish cooking it, the job is not done yet. Did you know that? It would be a grave mistake to finish the steak and just start hacking away and digging into it. And all of my meat connoisseurs can tell you, okay? Here's what you need to know. Write this down. There is a right way and a wrong way to cut steak. Some of you didn't know that. I said write it down, okay? There is a right way and there's a wrong way to cut steak. Did you know that? When you're ready to dig into the steak, you have to pay attention to the grain. If you ignore the grain, if you disregard the patterns that are embedded in the meat, you will end up with a chewy and tough piece of meat. If you disregard the grain, every bite, you know, every bite is extra chewy. Every, every bite is unnecessarily tough. Every bite is a fight. And you look at your neighbor next to you and you go, we have the same meat. 
the same cut. We cooked it at the same time. Why does your meat seem to taste so much better? Because they paid attention to the grain. Friends, in the same way, there is a grain to this universe. And if you disregard God's wise design, if you disregard the grain that is deeply embedded in our existence, it will feel like life itself is fighting you. It will feel like every day is a fight. Every day is extra chewy and tough and frustrating. And like life itself fights you like you're swimming upstream and you'll look to your neighbor and you go, we have the same, same life. We live in the same neighborhood, the same income, the same stage of life, the same situation, the same job. Why is it that your life seems so much more smooth? Because they paid attention to the grain. There is a deeply embedded order to how things work, friends. And those who don't mind the grain will feel the fight. But, here's where the commercial continues, but those who do mind the grain, those of you who listen to this that says, my son, do not lose sight of these. If you walk in wisdom, if you pay attention to the grain of God's design, it will be life for your soul you will experience the confident peace of wisdom. He says, pay attention to the grain, and when you walk, you will walk on your way securely. If you follow wisdom, if you pay attention, your path will lack the many, many potholes that trip up other people in a broken world. If you follow wisdom. If you, if you listen to wisdom, if you pay attention, if you just open up your ears, wisdom will lead you around the many landmines that sin in a fallen world has placed there to destroy you. When you're with wisdom, you can walk confidently. You can know without a shadow of a doubt that everywhere you step, you're going to be okay because you keep wisdom and wisdom keeps you. I think we all know what it's like here to have ignored wisdom only to then twist our ankle in a pothole. Anyone else? Right? We all know what it's like to find out where the landmines are by stepping on them. But if you keep wisdom, you can walk confidently. Your foot will not stumble because the paths of the wise are paved with peace. Not only will there be peace around you situationally, friends, there will be peace within you. There will be a peace in your heart. Look what he says. He goes, when you lie down, you will no longer experience the restless nights of tossing and turning. When you lie down, you won't experience the sleepless nights of anxiousness and worry. He says, when you lie down, your, your sleep will be sweet. Why didn't we just start and end there? Amen, right? What a commercial for wisdom. You could have just started with that Bible and you would have had me at the beginning. How many of you would like some sweet sleep these days? Yes, right? Pastor Daniel's in the back crying like a baby right now because that is a word from the Lord for him. Pastor Daniel just had his baby, right? Congratulations to him and Kayla. I see Kayla's mother here all the way from Hawaii. Love you, Kelly. And I just think of him right now as he reads this. He goes, yes, Lord, I will take some sweet sleep, all right? Why can you sleep sweetly? He says this, even when you experience sudden terror, even when ruin is happening all about you, even when you are experiencing situations that should terrify you, you need not be afraid. You need not allow your peace to be lost. Why? Because the Lord will be your confidence. To follow wisdom, friends, is to walk with a confidence and a swagger through life, even in the midst of terror, even in the midst of landmines, even when you're going through situations that other people say, dude, should you not be more worried? Like, maybe you don't understand the gravity of, of the seriousness of your condition, and you go, yeah, I get it, but I also know that I'm walking on paths where the Lord accompanies me. I'm walking on paths that are near to the Creator, and I know that I'm walking on paths that He considers blessed. You see, to follow wisdom is to walk in confidence that God himself is your companion, close to your side. 
Maybe you're here this morning and you are tired of walking on eggshells through life. Maybe you're here this morning and you're tired of just having to second guess every decision and I do it right and is there something I don't know and should I move there and should I take this job and should I say yes to the dress and should I do that and you're just, and you're paralyzed by a constant fear of what should I do. Friends, listen to the commercial this morning. Get wisdom and you can walk confidently because the Lord is at your side. Get wisdom and he will direct and order your steps and he will bless the path that you are on. Get wisdom and your feet will not stumble. Those who walk in wisdom need not flinch in the face of terror or ruin. Because when you walk in wisdom, the calamity that swirls around you can't touch the peace within you. Get wisdom. One more part of our commercial here. We've seen that the lives of the wise are enriched, the paths of the wise are paved with peace, There's one more here. There's one more here. Verse 27. And it's actually not about you. It's about you. The final part of our commercial is not about you individually. It is about y'all and how this impacts all of you guys. Look at the last few verses. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to do it. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come again tomorrow. I will give it. When you have it with you, do not plan evil against your neighbor who dwells trustingly beside you. Do not contend with a man for no reason when he has done you no harm. Do not envy a man of violence and do not choose any of his ways. For the devious person is an abomination to the Lord, but the upright are in his confidence. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the dwelling of the righteous. Toward the scorners he is scornful, but to the humble He gives favor. The wise will inherit honor, but fools get disgrace. The final thing here, the final thing that Proverbs offers us to convince us to get wisdom is this. The community of the wise dwell in goodness. The community of the wise dwell in goodness. You see, when you pursue wisdom, when you live in the wise ways of God's design, it doesn't just transform your life. When you mind the grain, it doesn't just change your existence. Wisdom creates a culture. The community of the wise, there's, there, there's just something to it. There's an ethos. There's a culture. There's just a way of being in the community of the wise that is life-giving. It's attractive. Can I just put it plainly? It's good. It is good to live in the community of the wise because you see, in this community, wisdom leads you to help your needy neighbor, to protect your innocent neighbor, and to avoid your violent neighbor. Look what wisdom teaches the community of the wise. First, he says, do not withhold good. In a culture marked by wisdom, people help each other as much as they can. Wisdom leads her citizens and says, if it's in your ability to help your neighbor in need, don't withhold it. Don't say, well, you know what? Come back tomorrow. I'll give you some food tomorrow. You know what? I know you need that. Just give me one more day. I just want to think about it. No, no, no. If it's in your power to do good, do good. People who walk in wisdom help their needy neighbors. That's attractive. Look at the radical part of this verse. When I read this, I I had to circle this and underline it and get my mind wrapped around this because this is wild. Look what he says. Do not withhold good from who? From those to whom it is due. Wisdom is saying here that our moral obligation to help our needy neighbor, if we have the power to do it, if it is within our means, our moral obligation is so strong that the goods we can afford to give them are as good as theirs. Isn't that wild? Pastor Ray Ortland, listen to what he said. If you have good you can do for somebody, then legally you own it. But morally, they own it. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that countercultural? Not in the community of the wise. That's how they roll. 
And again, this is a tremendously complex issue. Yes, you can't do it all. Yes, there are always entitled people. Yes, people can abuse your support and take advantage. Yes, but the Lord cuts through all of that here, and he just gets to the heart. Whatever good you can do, do it. Okay? Whatever good you can do, don't withhold it. Those who walk in wisdom have this distinctly attractive culture. They help their neighbor. This is good. Do you want to be a part of that? It's the community of the wise. Look what else it says here. In the community of the wise, we protect our innocent neighbor. We get this picture of our neighbor who dwells trustingly beside you. And so he's in his front yard with his back turned to you, and he's plucking his petunias and trimming his hedges and edging his grass, and he's doing all the things, and he has, he's completely unsuspecting. He has no reason to believe that you standing behind him as his neighbor would take advantage of him and do him harm. In the community of the wise, we give him no reason to suspect otherwise. That's what it is. In the community of the wise, friends, we don't attack those who have done us no harm for no reason. We don't plan evil against our neighbor. We don't take advantage of their unsuspecting nature. It's like that in the world. If you're naive, you will be taken advantage of. If you are innocent to the ways of evil, you will be taken advantage of. If you're not street smart, you won't survive. So always watch your back and look over your shoulder. In the community of the wise, we don't need to look over our shoulder because wise people don't take advantage of their unsuspecting and innocent neighbors. Theirs is a culture of trust and reasonableness. Man, I want those kind of neighbors, do you? I want to live in this community of the wise, people who protect their innocent neighbors. Remember, wisdom is leading us on paths that are paved with peace. And so in this community, we perpetuate peace. In this community, we don't turn relational molehills into relational mountains, right? We're not provoking conflict unnecessarily. Overlook an offense. Take a deep breath. Give the benefit of the doubt. <sighs> Perpetuate peace. That's the culture we're talking about here. And the last part of this culture, we are taught to avoid our violent neighbors. You see, those who walk in wisdom, they see the man of violence, they see the paths of violence, and they go, nope, boom, not my people. They see the paths of violence, and they choose none of those ways, and they say, those are not my ways. I'm not about that life. And they go the other way. Why would the Lord have to tell the community of the wise not to envy a man of violence? It makes no sense. If I say, hey, don't envy my broccoli, peanut butter, and turnip sandwich. You're like, uh, wasn't planning on it, right? Like, why would the Lord tell you to not envy someone unless there was something to envy? And the reality is, friends, violent people succeed. Violent people get ahead. People who are conniving and devious and underhanded, they often get ahead in this world. I mean, we learn this from the very youngest ages, right? We're on the playground. Why is it the bullies are popular? Why is it that those who take advantage of others are looked up to? But you see, the wise, the community of the wise, they don't envy their ways because they see, tr they see through that. They see the true nature of things. And they say, yes, there may be temporary success on those paths, but I see the ultimate end of things. And all of those paths, the paths of the wicked, the scorners, the fools, those roads end in death and disgrace. And so I will not envy them. And instead, I will choose the paths of the upright, of the righteous, of the humble, the community of the wise, they choose the ways that are close to God because they know that these ways ultimately end in favor and honor. Friends, do you want to be part of that community? Do you want to be part of that tribe? Do you want those people to be your people? This could be yours if you get wisdom. If you get wisdom. The community of the wise dwell in goodness. And so that's the commercial, friends. That's the commercial. Walking in wisdom will change your life. 
And so imagine you're at home and you're watching the commercial, right? And they got you hooked. Like, I want that watch. I want those jeans. I want that car. And then it ends and doesn't tell you where to find it. That would be a really bad commercial. Advertisers would be getting fired for that commercial. We all know every good commercial ends by telling you, here's where you can get it. And so the Bible's no different, right? You're hearing, you're, you're hearing the, the benefits of wisdom extolled. You're hearing the benefits of wisdom promoted. And the question that we're all asking is, so how do I get it? Where do I find this wisdom? Where do I subscribe? Where do I click? Where do I pick? What, what do I need to do, Sam, to get a wisdom that will enrich my life, pave my paths with peace, and change the culture of my community? Where do I get this wisdom? Well, you see, at the end of this commercial, we turn to the end of the book, and we learn in Colossians chapter chapter 2, verse 3, that all of God's wisdom is found in Christ. Colossians 2, 3 says, Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You want wisdom. You want to know the grain of the universe. You want to know how this existence is supposed to work. God has taken all of his infinite wisdom, and he put it in his son, the person of Jesus, and he says, follow me, and you will be wise. We're sitting here, friends, listening to this commercial, and we say the lives of the wise are long and blessed. Which lives are blessed? Jesus says, follow me, for I am life, and all who come to me will have life, life abundantly. If you long for an enriched life, you're longing for life with Christ. We see in this passage here that the paths of the wise are paved with peace. Jesus said, follow me. And lay down your anxious toil, lay down your burdens, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Learn how to live as my apprentice and I will teach you how to mind the grain of my Father's design. If you're longing for peace this morning, you're really longing for life with Christ. And then finally here, the community of the wise dwell in goodness. Jesus came not to save individuals. He came to create a new community. He implemented a new family. And so he says, if you long to be a part of this kind of community, what you're really longing for is to be in the family of Christ. What your soul really longs for is to become a brother and sister in God's family. And Jesus doesn't just invite you into a family. He laid down his life so that you could be in his family. He laid down his life so that you're simply not a house guest this morning. Christian, you're not a guest here. You're family. He laid down his life so that you could be called a son and daughter of God and belong with your brothers and sisters here. If you long for the community of the wise, friends, you long for the family of God. And all you need to do to get wisdom All you need to do to have life with Christ, Jesus says it's simple. Come to him in faith. Do you dare to believe that you can come near and God would respond to you with grace and mercy? Do you dare to believe that? You think you can have a chance at being in this family? Good, because you do. Not because you're good enough, but because he's good enough. If you dare to believe that, friends, the Bible calls that faith. And if you're here this morning and there's something in your heart that you say, I I do believe that. I want wisdom. I want to turn and experience the life with Christ. It's as easy as A, B, C. I was reminded recently, you know, I read theology books and I read all the, and those are great, right? This is, I love those things. And I, and I read it and I love abstraction and getting complicated. And, and I was just reminded by a friend recently, Coming to Christ is as easy as A, B, C. If you truly believe this, you admit, A, admit that you're a sinner and you don't deserve it. I admit I have no entitlement to what I just read. I admit I deserve to be on the outside, but I, B, believe, I dare to believe that God is good enough and his grace is big enough to accept me. And then C, I confess I have a new Lord. I confess Jesus as Lord. I declare him to be the savior of my life. And so friends, if you're here this morning and you want wisdom, you want the wisdom that will change your life, you want the wisdom of Christ, you don't need to talk to me. You don't need to go talk to a pastor. You don't need to check a box between you and the Lord. You can just pray an ABC. You can pray and say, Lord, save me. 
and you're his in that moment. Anyone need wisdom this morning? <laughs> Anyone need the wisdom of Christ? I'm going to pray for you right now. And friends, if you're here, as a matter of fact, we'll do this. If you're here and you say, Sam, would you please pray for me? I need the wisdom that is found in Christ this morning. Just raise your hand. Would you like me to pray for you? I will. Amen. Yes. Yes, I will pray for you. I will pray for you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, you've seen these hands. We come to you, Lord. We need your wisdom. We've heard the commercial. We've heard your word that has drawn us and has piqued our interest and has, has, has interested our soul. And we say, we want that. And you say, come to Christ. So Lord, we come this morning. For my brothers and sisters in Christ who are needing wisdom this morning, would you bless them with wisdom? For my friends here this morning who up to this point have still been exploring faith and they don't, they don't necessarily consider themselves a follower of Jesus, but they're checking it out. Lord, for those who say, man, I want this, would you hear their prayers and save them? Give them wisdom. Give them the Holy Spirit. Bring them into your family. Your word says that when we confess with our mouths that you'll forgive us of our sins. So forgive them and make them sons and daughters this morning. We love you, Father, and we thank you for your word. And all of God's people said, amen.